start off again by introducing myself. My name is EJ Salinas. Um, I'm the owner of the South Texas uh, or RGV Mystery Machine. Really? Yes, sir. And you I'll got show your own mystery machine, huh? That's great, man. Yeah, I've got my own mystery machine as well, too. Uh, I'm pretty, uh, pretty proud of it. You know, speaking of mystery machines. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You've got, you look like you got your Freddy outfit on, huh? Yeah. So actually at my church, we did like this, um, this teaching on, on, on Halloween. Uh, I personally right. choose not to celebrate it. Uh, and so I dressed up as Freddy cause I own the Mr. Machine to explain why I choose not to celebrate it. I know that not everybody, uh, sees it that way, but, uh, you know, everybody has different beliefs. So it's what makes us all unique, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Well, you look good there, Freddy. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well was... gang, I guess that wraps up another mystery. <laughs> yes, sir. So fire away. What questions you got, my friend? Well, um, I have 10. Is that cool or no? That's cool. Let's go. Let's knock them out. Okay. Well, the first question is, who is uh, Scott in this? Can you please tell me a, a little bit about yourself for those who maybe who don't know who you are? I would like you to introduce yourself. Well, Scott in this is uh, a legend in his own mind. Um, <laughs> I'm a radio personality. Um, uh, I, I'm a concert promoter. I'm a songwriter. I'm a, uh, a lover of life. Uh, I, I love cartoons. I love Scooby-Doo and Shaggy. I grew up as a kid loving these characters. And to be able to step into the paws of the world-famous Don Messick and Casey Kasem and, uh, and keep these characters, uh, uh, their legend living and the voices living, uh, and the exact sound of these characters is, is an honor to me. So, uh, that's a little bit about myself, you know, a radio personality and just, uh, you know, just a lover of cartoons. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a kid of the uh, Saturday morning cartoons of the 70s, you know. Absolutely. And I myself, uh, I'm also a cartoon fanatic. Everyone who knows me knows that about me. Well, that's good. That's we all got to be a fanatic about something, right? Yes, sir. Well, speaking of cartoons, you mentioned uh, Shaggy and, and Scooby. I wanted to ask you, when did you first discover that you had the ability to create the voices of Scrappy, Shaggy, and Scooby-Doo. Well, when I was a kid, I used to mimic the characters. I'd watch them so much. And so I grew up, you know, in radio and being an impersonator and everything. And, you know, I used to run American Top 40 with Casey Kasem in radio. And I got to thinking, I saw where Casey Kasem did Shaggy or, or, or yeah, Casey Kasem did Shaggy. And I was like, wow, I could probably go from doing Casey Kasem's voice to sliding right smack dab into doing Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of how I, uh, I, I learned, you know, I just perfected them over the years, you know? Wow. That's awesome. The, I, I have like my own version of Shaggy's voice. It's like a combination of, of Matthew Lillard's years and Casey Kasem's. It's like a combination of the three. Well, let's and hear it. Come on. What are you holding is, off on? It's kind of like, I'm like, dude, we've got to get out of here. You're absolutely right. I hear some Matthew Lillard in there and uh, some Scott in us and a little bit. Yeah, that's great. That's good. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. The only one that I could never get was, was Scooby-Doo. And I'll ask you a question about that a little later. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of these voices, I, was, I wanted to ask, how did you become one of the official voice actors for these characters? And was there an audition process involved? Or can you tell me a little bit about that process? Well, you know, it's short and simple. You know, I'm in radio and I did a little parody song to uh, a, a country song at the time, back in around 1996 called Shaggin' on the Boulevard. It was a country hit by the country group Alabama. And I parried it and called it Shaggy on the Boulevard. And a guy kept calling me, telling me I should call Hanna-Barbera, play him that. And I didn't want to borrow trouble, but after about 30 days, I finally gave in and I did it. And lo and behold, they were casting for a new Scooby-Doo and Don Messick had been friends of mine for years. And I was kind of like, well, what, what about Don? And they said, well, you know, Don had a stroke. And I'm like, no, I did not know that. And so they said, but we would love for you to audition as Scooby-Doo. And so I did. And uh, over the course of a couple of months, uh, I got the part. I, I beat out Dave, uh, Dave Coulier from Full House, which was kind of cool. You know, I've always been a Uncle Jesse fan, you know, cut it out. And so, in fact, he wrote the forward in my book. And so uh, 
good guy. Uh, and it was an honor to step into those paws. And then I, I did Zombie Island as Scooby. And then the next one, I went on to doing Shaggy as well. So, uh, and then Scrappy Deppy Doo in the motion picture, which you have a picture of in the back. So, uh, yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, well speaking of those movies, I, I know that one of the movies you did uh, for Scooby Doo was uh, Scooby Doo and the Alien Invaders. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, about the song called How Groovy. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what singing like Shaggy was like in comparison to speaking as Shaggy? Was it a challenge or? How, no, because, you know, I've channeled that character so much that it's easy to do. You know, I met by chance a girl in bell bottom pants and she likes to say groovy. groovy. She came out of the blue and in an instant I knew everything would be groovy. groovy. For her, I climb a mountain, swim the deepest ocean. I'd even help her shopping. It's the depth of my devotion. And even when we're chasing ghosts, we'll quit in time for dinner, six o'clock at the most. You know. That's amazing. That's amazing. And it, it's, it's a great song. I get a lot of people that ask me to do that, and uh, it's always an honor to do that. That's beautiful. And th what I love about that song is, It's so pure compared to other songs, love songs that you hear. Um, yeah. It, it, it's just, and it, it's a song that's appropriate for a kid who's watching a cartoon. And I think Absolutely. that's so beautiful. Absolutely. You know, and it's, uh, in fact, I was looking around here. I, you know, I paint. You knew that, right? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, you know, I do a bunch of, uh, of paintings and stuff. I'll share some of this with you. Here's one I did. This is, you know what movie this is out from the end of? Uh, I think I heard it was from Zombie Island, but I'm not too sure. It is. You're good. That's where he comes around. He goes, rats? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, of course, let's see. I think I have. Let's see here. Uh, well, I do a bunch of them. But one I just did here. Oh, I love this one. This one is uh, Scooby and Shaggy depicted as best friends. You know, oh, kind of that's beautiful. the scene. And I'm a big, I'm a big Columbo fan, big Columbo fan. So I had to do one with Columbo, Peter Falk, with his favorite dog. Okay. And this one right here in honor, of course, I've got it. This is in honor of Don Messick. That is Don. Oh, that's sweet. The original voice of Scooby-Doo and what a legend there. And folks can get those at onescotshop.com. We got, we got prints on there, but we give all of our money in the prints and stuff to charity for my children's charities. And we help them out at Christmas and, you know, helping kids that are less fortunate. So that's what we do. We enjoy doing that. You know, that's, that's wonderful. And I actually, I want to talk a little bit about that also later on in the, in the interview. Cause I, what I like to do whenever I interview someone or whenever they help me, I like to promote the, the charities that they Absolutely. help. I, I always love doing that. Absolutely. Well, in continuation with your, with the Scooby-Doo movies, Um, I think of the ones that you start in, my favorite is, is uh, Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. That's my favorite. You know and what's I, funny? Because your, your, your generation, how old are you? I'm 22. 22. See, that's, that's right. I, met, I went to a, a, a con up in Cape Girardeau, Missouri recently. I ran into more kids that were about 20, 21, 22 years old. And every single one of those kids said Cyber Chase was their favorite movie. And what's funny is, is if you go... A little bit older, you get somebody that says, okay, they're 23, 24. Then you start hitting the zombie island ones. You know what I'm saying? Because they remember that as their first big, their big, first big Scooby movie. But uh, Cyber Chase was cool. It was really different. And it was a, I got to do two Scoobies, two Shaggies. I did the Creeper in that uh, video. And I thought the animation was great. I thought the colors popped off of the screen and, uh, Just, just a great, uh, a great uh, movie. And what was your favorite part about making that movie? Well, you know, the cast, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, we had, uh, golly, I'm trying to remember the cast here, but uh, uh, sitting next, I got to tell you, sitting next to Frank Walker is always a, a blast because the guy's just incredible, you know, and he does all these sound effects all the time. And, you know, you'll get like a drip of water coming down. You think it's literally dripping from the, from the ceiling and it's just him making sounds with his uh, mouth, you know? Wow. But uh, they, that, it was really cool. And uh, uh, to, to, you know, to, 
hang out with some really cool people and um, just uh, just a wonderful cast. I was trying to think. Let's see here. Uh, oh, here we go. It's the script from Cyber Chase. Wow. The mother of all scripts right here. <laughs> Cyber Chase. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to pick a page and go down and do some characters. Um, Fred says, uh, Fred pats the woolly mammoth he is riding. Hang on, guys. We're almost there. White on the group, the two woolly mammoths, mammoths stop at the base of the volcano, the volcano. Everyone jumps down to the ground on the volcano. We see the volcano from Scooby's gang's point of view. It is tall, uh, uh, ominous looking on the group. They're all looking upward at the volcano. Fred continued, does anybody see anything? On Shaggy, like all I can see is more smoke coming from the top. On Velma, all I see are rocks. Rocks and more rocks on Daphne. Daphne's point. Skyward, look up there. I mean, you know, just it's just fun going down through all this stuff. But this was, um, I'm trying to think of who all was in on this thing. Uh, I, I forget, you know, it's been so many years ago, 21 years ago. In fact, Cyber Chase is celebrating 20 years, I think. 20 years. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Just celebrating their 20. And, and Zombie Island is celebrating its 23rd. Whoa. So, yeah. So there's a little from the script of Cyber Chase. That, that's amazing. I wasn't expecting that to happen. So thank you for that. There you go. There you go. Well, well speaking of the cast, and I think you answered this question a, a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll go a little bit in depth of this question. I was going to ask, what was it like working with Frank Welker? Because, uh, you know, my, um, for me personally, my favorite character is Fred, probably because I drive the van a lot. And yeah. I'm like the leader of our cosplaying group. Uh, but is there anything that maybe he taught you that you were like, oh, I never knew that before? Or did you know what Frank Frank Walker told me one time? He said, uh, uh, he said, spend more time listening than talking. You will learn way more by listening than the business. And he's absolutely right. I used to go and just love to just sit and listen to the, all the actors. Like I would sit in there in the cafeteria while we're you know at lunch, and I literally would just listen. It's amazing what you learn and what you find out. I had a funny moment once uh, when I was out there doing Zombie Island. And uh, at the time, I had never met Jim Cummings, who's the voice of Winnie the Pooh, Tigger. I didn't know who he was. I'm not going to lie. And I'm my first time out there. And I got to tell you, it was lunchtime. And I'm talking to, uh, to, to Jim Cummings. I walked up and he says, hey, welcome aboard. I hear you're the new you know, Scooby. I said, yeah. And he says, well. You know, you got big paws to fill and Don Messick there. I said, boy, I know, ain't that the truth? He goes, do you do any other voices? I said, well, professionally now, only Scooby. But I said, I do a mean Winnie the Pooh. Now, I had no idea the guy did Winnie the Pooh. So I go, he goes, oh, yeah, let me hear it. So I said, uh, oh, mother, I got a rumbly in my tumbly. I'm a silly old man. And he goes, man, that's good. Don't. Don't let the guy that knows that you do that voice or Walt Disney know that because they'll fire that guy that does the voice now. And I'm like, yeah, you ain't kidding. You ain't kidding. So I walked back, sat down and talking to Frank Welker. I said, hey, Frank, that Jim Cummings guy, what are uh, what are some of the voices he does? Oh, well, I mean, pfft, you know, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. And, and I went, <laughs> are you serious? And he goes, yeah. And I go. Okay, so I got up quietly, went and found a, a bathroom and sat in the stall for about two hours, afraid to come out. So I walked out and thought, how am I going to handle this? So Jim Cummings comes up to me. He sets his food down and he goes, I like you, kid. You're pretty funny. I said, really? And he says, well, he said, yeah, I mean, that was funny. You know, you're asking me what characters do I do? And you go into doing Winnie the Pooh. No one's ever done that like that. And uh <laughs> I said, I thought you'd get a kick out of that. I just, you know, throwing that at you, you know, he goes, that's funny, you know? So I was like, Phew. he thought I was joking from the beginning. You know what I mean? So that's a true story, but uh good guy. Good guy. It, it was great working with people after Adrian Barbo, Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker. Wow. I mean, what else more, what else can you expect? You know, I mean, you're a kid from Poplar Bluff, Missouri, and you find yourself sitting next to Mark Hamill, Mark, 
freaking Hamill. Okay. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty impressive there. That that's amazing. If I if I saw him, I'd probably be like, I don't know. I mean, just, just talking to you is and amazing. a great guy. <laughs> Mark Hamill is just the nicest guy you will ever meet in your life. So that's awesome. That's awesome. And I'll take that into consideration as part of advice that you're giving to me. Now there that, you go. You just got to listen, you know, and I have a hard time doing that sometimes, but that is true. The more you listen, the more you learn. Amen. Amen. My, uh, my dad, he's also my pastor. He says, why do you think I gave us two ears and one mouth so that we can hear more than yes, we hear more and talk less. Yep. Absolutely, man. Uh, well, but, uh, speaking of these characters, Uh, which of these three characters was your favorite to voice? Because you had Scrappy, you had Shaggy, and you had Scooby. All three of them. Which one was your Listen, favorite? Listen, all of them. And you know what's funny is this. You know, obviously Scooby is is fun to voice. That that's the, I mean, that's the catalyst of what I do, right? But Shaggy has so much personality. You know what I mean? Because man, he's the hipster dude. You know, <laughs> he he actually has more more lines in the movie, and you can actually have more things to say. <laughs> you know. Scooby's more in mannerisms, <laughs> but Shaggy's the, he's the catalyst, you know, he's, he's the one that, that can really, he can be any character he wants to be, you know, in Witch's Ghost, there's a scene where they're walking down the eye, uh, the alley, and they see the hex girls coming, and Shaggy puffs out his chest, and the original scene was Shaggy was just supposed to say in Shaggy's voice, hi, girls. And I said, wouldn't it be funny if we did it in Casey Kasem's voice? If we just changed it real quick, dropped the Shaggy and went, well, hi, girls. And and they loved it. And we did that. You know, there's another thing in Witches Goes too. if you'll notice at the very beginning, Shaggy, they solved the mystery in the museum. And Shaggy, in the original script now, it said, give me five. Give me five, Scoob. But I stopped and I told Davis Doy, who was producing, I said, uh, Scooby or Shaggy would never say to Scooby, give me five, because he knows he only has four paws. They're best friends. I mean, and he goes, that's brilliant. It's like, give me four. You know, so that's what we went with. And it, that's awesome that they gave you that creative liberty, because I've heard a director that's kind of go. Cool. Okay, yeah. no, we're going to do it this way. But the oh, trust that... me, there's a lot of them out there. But, you know, Colette Sunderman and all these people that I've worked with are just ph phenomenal people. And they're very, and what makes them phenomenal is they know that these actors live these characters. They know. And nobody ever gets it right. If you get into this business pretending you know everything, you're going to be on the outside looking in. And, um, you know, you Rick Dees once told me, a famous radio personality, he said, Surround yourself with everybody that's smarter than you and listen to them. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good advice, you know? And so that's true. Don't ever think you have it all figured out, you know? So that's just the way it is. And that's great advice. I've heard that many times. And every time I'm like, yes, because I always want to learn more from people who know more than me. Yep. It's, um, you know, there's a, There was a, I, I forget now, but there's a guy, there was a young uh, producer I read a story on who said that in the business early on, he thought he knew everything. And he said he had a sidekick and he finally just told him to get lost. I don't need you. This is my project. And that was, you know, Robert Zemeckis. And uh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you just, sometimes you may want to listen to those people, you know? He said his movie bombed. So, uh, you know, there's, uh, there is something to be able to say that, uh, you know, listen to the people around you because they can help make your movie or your, uh, your project that you're working on a lot better, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, give me one moment because the garage door is opening and I don't want that to come out in the video. That's all right. Garage door is good though. Ah, okay. Okay. I'll leave it on. Yeah. I can, you can't hear that. Oh, okay, perfect. Hey, I'm in the, I'm actually in the restroom. This is no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the toilet. That's you know. that's uh that's shaggy and scooby humor right there. That's exactly right. 
Well, speaking of Shaggy and Scooby, we have a young man in our, in our group who play, who cosplays as Scooby Doo, and he's working with his own variation of the voice. Um, is there any advice that you can offer him for the voice? No, nah, he just needs to make sure he rolls his R's all the time. Oh boy, <laughs> start every sentence with an R, and you'll never go wrong. And just do the laugh. The laugh is essential. You got to get the laugh down because everybody likes to hear. <laughs> You know, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And you got to get the R, just roll the R's and do a lot of rut rows because people, they love the rut row that, I mean, that's, that's become one of the most top recognized phrases in the industry. Rut row. People use it all over. You watch movies, you watch TV. I was watching Die Hard the other day, I think it was. And even Bruce Willis went rut row. You know, I mean, it's synonymous with, uh, with, uh, with, with TV movies and people's, uh culture and sayings now you know when you mess up it's rut rut uh yeah that's that's pretty true that's pretty you true know? well uh speaking of, of general advice um is there any advice other advice that you can give to aspiring voice actors such as such as myself because i want to be an act like an, a physical actor but i'm also interested in doing voice acting do, do you have any advice here's the deal do everything anything and 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 everything when someone says will you do it for free absolutely you got to build a, a repertoire of someone says how i got in the business is i offered to clean the radio station for free and then they let me run american top 40 with casey Kasem, which led to me mimicking shaggy which led to me doing the voice of shaggy and and on and on so voice be willing and always sing in the shower do crazy voices in the shower and if someone ever tells you to shut up uh, sing louder be louder (laughs) stick your foot and when a guy tells you he's not hiring say thank you you'll be back tomorrow and when he goes okay but i'm telling you i'm not hiring you need to come back again tomorrow and he's going to tell you again he's not hiring and you say thank you sir and you come back again tomorrow and eventually the guy's going to go, if I, if I hire you, will you please stop knocking on my door every morning? And that's a true story because it actually happened to me. And that's how I got into the business. Well, they didn't want to hire me. And I just, I forced them to hire me, you know, because I would not leave. Wow. If you want something bad enough in life, go get it. Go get it. It's yours to take. Yeah, I've, I think I've just heard of- Just do it legally. <laughs> yes, I know. Do it legally. <laughs> I don't want to go to jail. I'm too young to go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm about to close this interview. I, I'm going to do one final question, and I'll ask you a little bit about the, the places that you'd like to donate to yep. and, and um, about a little bit about your website. Uh, th- this is the, my final question. You know, um, I'm a Christian, and, and my group is a Christian variation of Mystery Incorporated. And with that being said, I wanted to ask, is there anything that maybe you have on your mind at, that you would like me to pray for before we end this interview? You know, first of all, I'm, I'm very, I'm very humbled that you had me on here. I really appreciate that. I, I, I really appreciate that you walk with the Lord. You know, that's a, um, you know, everything is, everything is through Christ in this world. And um, we tend to forget it. I forget it all the time. And I have to keep reminding myself that uh, we cannot carry the whole burden ourselves. We have to ask the good Lord uh, to carry uh, our trials and tribulations. You know, that's why there's always an extra footprints in the sand, folks. Uh, last night I was in the emergency room having panic attacks. Uh, my blood pressure was sky high. Sometimes that's the good Lord reminding us that we need to take a step back, that we need to, we need to slow down. Um, you know, we're, none of us are perfect. Um, I, I'm not perfect. I, I, you know, and, uh, but I am, I'm very grateful, you know, um, uh, for the good Lord, for giving me this and giving me a great wife, giving me great kids, giving me a, a great Dane that I call Scooby-Doo and a bulldog I call Scrappy. Um, he's given me a lot of things. And sometimes I have to pinch myself to really, to really understand that what, what, what I've accomplished in my life, you know, I had three, three goals as, as a young man to achieve in my life. One was to win a Country Music Association Award from the CMAs for Radio Personality of the Year. Another was to write a hit song for Kenny Rogers, the world-famous Kenny Rogers. And another was to become the voice of Scooby-Doo, because I always was more into doing the character voices and learning, and, and I thought that was so cool. And in 1997, 
the night that I stood on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry to receive the CMA Air Personality of the Year from the Country Music Association, my movie, Zombie Island, had gone national. I had voiced Scooby. I had gotten the award. And two years later, I wrote a number 38 country hit for Kenny Rogers. So always put the faith in the Lord, always thank the Lord, travel with the Lord, and he will open up all the doors for you because life is yours to take. You just got to take the bull by the horn and you got to thank the man upstairs who gives it to you. Amen. Amen. Well, um, that was, that was, that's very true. There, and uh, thank you for saying that. Uh, so everyone watching, everyone who gets to see this, you heard it first from, Shaggy, the voice himself. Like, oh. man, I'm telling you right. Uh, can you say that again? It, it, it got a little cut off. I'm so sorry about yeah. that. Well, first of all, I am going to tell everybody, too, on your uh, said, do not forget to go to onescottshop.com. Check me out. All of my stuff's up there for charities, whatnot. You can uh, you can uh, hook a brother up and buy something and just know you're helping kids. Uh, O-N-E, scottshop.com. And as Casey Kasem would say, Put your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Wow, that was that was amazing. There you go. I, I do these things all the time. I enjoy doing them. But uh, God bless you. And, uh, you have a great one, and it's been great seeing you. I, I really enjoyed uh, having a conversation with you. Likewise, Mr. Scott. God bless you. All right. Have a great one, my friend. You too. Bye-bye.